today's Monday. I had a nice little Monday planned of sending out uh, an elk shaped newsletter, the CrossFit newsletter, and answering emails and editing a podcast and lining out the week. Got a phone call from an outfitter basically saying, hey, I got a really big Tom. He's been kind of wreaking havoc on these landowners' property. They don't want him around. I need a hunter and I got your name and number from one of your buddies that you wanted to, you know, get a cat. He's like, here's your opportunity. What do you say? And I was like, Ooh, let me drop everything and I'll be there. So about 25 minutes ago, I got that call. I uh, took my bow out, put broadheads on it, double checked my sight. I took my lighted knocks off, put regular knocks on because we're hunting Idaho. Now I'm headed to uh, North Idaho. I gotta go pick up a 2019 hunting license and a general lion tag. Just grabbed all my quick gear. Luckily my bag was packed. I'm charging my camera batteries right now as we speak and we're going. So I'm jamming up north. We'll see how this goes. My dream is to, to definitely hunt lions and get one. I'll spend some money for conservation and help uh, shrink down these exceeding cat numbers. And uh, we'll see what this Mike guy's operation's like as well. And we'll film it and bring you guys along. So this morning I cut a big tom track. And um, I don't know, he's got like a 44 inch stride on him, which is a mature cat, very mature cat. Um, turned loose on him and uh, dogs ran him probably about three miles before they treat him and uh, we're about ready to walk into that tree and see what we got how many cats are running through here um actually where i ran in here the other three days ago i treated a female with two kittens and then there's another um, female that doesn't have any kittens and that's probably why he come he came back into this area. Have you seen him in here two weeks ago and he came back in probably because this other female that doesn't have um, any kittens with her is probably gonna come back in the heat. So he's probably checking her out until she comes in basically. And you cut his track uh, last night? Uh, this morning. This early. morning pretty early? Yeah. Because it did snow, didn't it? Uh, it snowed yesterday and I got just a skiff of snow, just enough to be able to find a track in the road basically. How many dogs did you let out? Um, right now we have six dogs on track. Okay. And there's six dogs at the tree at the moment. How long has this cat been treed? Um, probably about three hours now. What's the likelihood of this cat just jumping in? Um, when we probably walk in there, he probably will jump because he's been in there for so long. He's probably getting kind of antsy. Um, so chances are he'll probably jump and probably run another few more hundred yards for your tree. The dogs will tire him out again, then he'll stay in the tree for us most likely. How long can a cougar really, like they're very anaerobic, very sprinter, not long distance, like? Yeah, they're, they can only run short, short distance fat they can outrun the dogs but only for a short period of time um, then they got to run up the tree they just have real small lung capacity um, and that's you know how they hunt you know they're just stock up on something and either they catch it within 100 yards or they give up on it so they really don't need to have lung capacity like what the dogs do all right guys so this is just a kind of a, a interesting deal I, you know I'm very transparent I, I woke up today drinking coffee and emails and getting ready to go to work and got a hold of this guy got a hold of me through a mutual friend and wanted to know if I was interested in, in getting uh, a cat killed obviously I've been kind of saving on the side for this hunt I know it's something I just in Idaho especially you don't want to go with friends with the dogs and, and any gray area is not good real black and white that's a one hunt thing I would be willing to pay someone especially predation that's that's awesome so this is an area that I have hunted quite a bit and It'll be cool to get maybe an old mature Tom out of here, help keep the numbers down, help the landowners out. It's almost like a depredation deal. We're doing this for the landowner. Uh, these cats, I mean, they wreak havoc down here in these areas that are developed. You know, and they're just being a cougar. I mean, we got nothing but respect for them, but it's also just kind of part of the management. I had to you know, buy an out-of-state license and tag. That money's going to conservation, as well as we're you know, helping support this guy who's doing this as a career. Um, so the money's going in a good place, and there's plenty of numbers in here to just kind of help keep these, you know, these lions at bay as far as when it comes to predation of people's dogs and cats and, um, you know, their wildlife that's right in there. You don't want a cougar killing stuff right in your property like what's been going on down here. So um, I'm pretty excited. And uh, if anything, we'll get close to a, a cat. I've been up front, up close a few times, but never with dogs, just kind of just out hunting. So this will be a different uh, a different deal for me. I'm pretty excited. Um, 
especially if he jumps out of the tree and we're on the chase again so we'll see we'll see what happens uh he, he showed me a quick video of it uh i don't know what boone and crockett is but that's got to be close to a booner head on this guy he's he's a monster and he's probably killed a lot how many animals did these things kill a year i mean you hear guys say one a week i think they're hard on elk especially elk calves um a time he'll kill probably every week and a half two weeks a female that has kittens she's got to kill every few days wow hello hey tony yeah yeah he's a big one he's he just a, he's just like basically right on he's basically right on the property line there so when we get the dogs out we're gonna pull the dogs back and let them come out of the tree and he'll probably go right back he's probably he's gonna head north back onto that um forest service there so and then we'll and then we'll get him okay we're leaving the truck and we're heading up to go find this cat this outfitter's 25 and just took off so gonna have to keep up with him. I like his style. Seems like a nice young guy. Let's go check this cat out. So we're 390 yards from him. So just on that edge there, just over, it kind of drops off right there. And they're just like 10 yards, just right on the other side of that there. All right, should we go see what he is? Yeah. This is awesome. Starting to get sweaty. Almost there. come true for me just to, to be a part of this whole thing you have no idea i'm so jacked we're not sure right here it's not posted right here but it shows that they're we're literally right on the edge of private here so just to be safe we pulled the dogs off and let the cat bail out of here and get out of here that way we can be for sure 100 that he's not going to be um any issues here um, um the landowners you know around here they want this cat dead um we talked to a guy that's the property just south of here and his property ends right here it's kind of on the corner and he said gives okay to go in here um but we just to be fit safe we want this cat out of here because it's his neighboring property around the corner and we're not sure if it's on that or not because it's like basically shows on on extra right on the edge just to be no problems we just bail them out that way the dogs get a little more training and everything get a little good video of them coming out of the tree and stuff and um put them back in a tree and then we can do what we came here to do I hear him down there. They're trying to figure out where he went. Okay, so you guys heard it. We are. Uh, this cat was treed. He turned. He went down now. He went down, which is fine. We uh, we basically were a little gray where he was at. It was close to public, private. We have permission to get over here. So rather than just do anything gray, let him down. Let the dogs get more work and. Uh, Make sure we're black and white, do it the right way. So that's why that cat just got freed and hopefully he's up a tree again and somewhere that's uh, black and white. Let's go check it out. I'm losing communication, they're too far away now. Okay. So we'll head back to the truck, go down and around and Figure out where they should treat again pretty quick here, I would think. Okay, this is no joke. Kick my ass. This cat's gone a long ways. He's still not treed. I'm gonna have to work for it.
I woke up today, did not know I was going cat hunting. It's been a dream of mine to actually see one of these up close on the ground. And uh, my mind's kind of blown. I don't have a lot of words. I'm so thankful that we got to like tree this, this cat twice, actually three times, and kind of like learn how the dogs really are. They're the what, they're the workhorse. And uh, watching Mike with his dogs is incredible. These are tough animals. We're up here in way north Idaho, and uh, I gotta tell you, I'm super humbled to get one of these. And uh, I'm also, you know, I don't know, out of words. This has just been an incredible experience, and I hope you get to do the same thing someday. The last walk. Yeah. 